Hello, you're watching Low Batteries, a look at video games and mental health. If you've never seen one of these before, welcome! This is an intermittent series in which we look at not just how mental health is portrayed in video games, but how video games can be useful support tools for those suffering with mental disorders. Episodes have included a look at video games and anxiety, the portrayal of PTSD, and also depression. To address the elephant in the room, it's been quite a long time since the last episode, and I'd just like to say to any viewers who have been with us from the start that I'm sorry. The channel basically has been going in a different direction this past year, and it's not always been easy to find the time to work on this show. Anyway, that's the admin out the way, so let's talk about Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice. Fair warning, this video is heavy on the spoilers, including one or two puzzle solutions, and it also contains depictions of psychosis some may find upsetting. Hellblade is the latest game from Team Ninja, made in association with the Wellcome Trust, who advised on the game's depiction of mental health. Hellblade follows picked warrior Senua as she goes on a journey to Helheim to rescue the soul of her deceased lover Dillian. Dillian, you learn over the course of the game, was sacrificed to the goddess Hela when the Northmen, that's the Vikings, invaded. Senua was away at the time, attempting to conquer what she refers to as her darkness, which, to use the proper term, is psychosis. Now, psychosis is a mental health issue that causes the sufferer to perceive reality differently to other people. This can include delusions, whereby the individual develops a strong belief not shared by others, for example that there are people secretly plotting to hurt them, and it can also include hallucinations, causing the sufferer to see, hear, sometimes even feel, taste or smell things that aren't really there. Oh, she heard us. There's no going back. Senua, for her part, often has visual hallucinations, but Nyon constantly has auditory hallucinations. She hears a handful of voices the game calls the Furies. These voices constantly analyse what Senua is doing, what her mental state is, and what her chances of survival are, frequently with an overly negative outlook. <laughs> What's she waiting for? Stop! Why did she do that? She shouldn't have done it. She can't go back now. <laughs> No, this is it. The hidden path. These voices nip at Senua, taking swipes at her ability to keep going on a journey fraught with both danger and uncertainty. With some good contextual voice lines, excellent acting and superb audio design, the Furies do a really great job of getting you to empathise with Senua, experiencing a little of what it might be like to live with psychosis while also trying to function as normal. The voices act like little gnawing doubts, providing a very potent depiction of how mental health disorders can destroy a person's confidence. It's very impressive where it could just as easily have been cheap or tawdry. Having your character hear voices can very easily come across as a tacky gimmick, especially when it's something that's often played up as a horror trope. They're out there, Jason. Find them and get your revenge. Hellblade, in fact, walks a very difficult path in trying to remain sensitive, poignant, and also entertaining. It's a path lined with pitfalls, each one threatening to make Hellblade seem cheap or sensationalist or just plain bad. To be honest, we thought it was going to stumble into one of these pitfalls after seeing it at Gamescom 2016. The performances seemed overdone, and the game in general seemed too heavily rooted in spooky horror to be really relatable. This, I should mention, was before we saw Senua as played by Melina Jurgens, whose portrayal is, frankly, pitch perfect. Fast forward a year, though, and Hellblade has thankfully proven it can walk that difficult path deftly. Senua's psychosis is really well depicted, but so is her depth of character. The strength of her resolve and how it wavers based on her situation, the intensity of her psychosis, and how close she is to recalling past traumatic events. We've already talked about Senua hearing voices, but she also has visual hallucinations. Some of these are harmful, such as the enemies that materialise out of nowhere and try to kill her, while other hallucinations guide her along her path, although of course, she can never really be sure of their intentions. That uncertainty creates a really brilliant tension, illustrating the ways in which the altered perception of reality psychosis forces on the sufferer can make that person very vulnerable. As you progress through Hellblade, you'll come up against a series of locked doors emblazoned with runes. 
In order to open the door, you need to find the runes elsewhere in the environment where they're cunningly squirreled away. This is the very first example, by the way, later ones are far more complex. Finding these runes can be a fun, or sometimes frustrating, puzzle, but it's also an interesting exercise in terms of Senua's mental health. In a hostile world in which her senses can't always be trusted, Senua seeks out familiar symbols in the world around her, trying to find something concrete and familiar in a capricious and dangerous environment. Senua's trying to gain perspective, in other words, where her psychosis seeks to strip it away from her. It's a really nice mechanic, and it's just one of the ways Senua seeks solace in Hellblade. She also finds it in positive relationships with others. At one point, we get a glimpse of what Senua's relationship with Dillian really meant to her. That she was surrounded and buoyed up by his positivity, making her feel a sense of security she hadn't experienced before. In this moment, the environment changes from the gloomy, unforgiving world Senua typically inhabits to a warmly lit, beautiful setting. It's a genuinely moving moment which makes the sense of loss at Dillian's death feel all the more real. A more constant companion for Senua, however, is Druth, or rather, Senua's remembrances of Druth. A friend of hers in life, he acts as a kind of guide, drawing on his own experiences with the darkness. His guidance helps Senua continue on her journey, in no small part down to the fact he's been through similar issues with mental health, thereby letting her know she's not alone. Druth is a really excellent character, and to be honest, it's a good thing he's in there. The footage we saw a year ago seemed to give Dillian's severed heads a voice, which was certainly evocative, but maybe a bit sensationalist. While Druth is certainly impassioned, his appearances are far more nuanced. As a whole, in fact, Hellblade is a layered and sensitive depiction of mental health, right down to its resolution. The best thing about Hellblade is that Senua doesn't find a cure for her darkness, which would be an unrealistic cop-out. Instead, she finds a way to cope, to come to terms with the fact she suffers from psychosis and approach it as something to be managed and lived with, not something to attempt to eradicate in a potentially self-destructive crusade. It's a realistic depiction that still manages to be uplifting. Senua continues to struggle with mental health difficulties, but we get the sense she's better equipped to carry on and to reach some kind of balance with her psychosis. Moreover, she forgives herself, which is truly important. Mental illness often makes people feel like they're at fault, like they're to blame for having a condition when it really isn't their choice, especially when traumatic events such as the one Senua has experienced play a part in that condition existing in the first place. In short, Hellblade is a really impressive portrayal of a disorder that can be very easy to get wrong or show in an insensitive manner. It stands as a testament not just to the work Ninja Theory put into getting it right, but what games as a medium can do to help people learn about and empathise with those dealing with mental illness. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this exploration of what Hellblade gets right about the depiction of mental health. If any of the subject matter has affected you and you feel like you need support, or if you'd just like to learn more about mental health, you can find links to a number of mental health resources in the depiction of this video. If you'd like to see more from Low Batteries, there are some episodes on screen now for you to choose from. Many thanks for watching, and take care. Mm -hmm.